What's up, everybody? Today is the beginning of a new Plex journey, so I decided I'm going to bring you along with me. This retired enterprise workstation is going to be my new Plex server. Check it out. All right. Let's go ahead and get this thing open. I actually picked it up for $249 on eBay, and it is rocking a 4790 processor. Not to be confused with the 4790K. They actually are very similar. It's just the 4790K is unlocked, and this one is not. And it seems like the 4790K's boost clock is a little bit higher than this one. Oh no, we got a whole bunch of this this uh, stuff here. Let's see if I can get it out of here without making a mess. So, if you're like me, I like the idea of buying all the parts I need and building a computer for these types of projects. But at the end of the day, it was just much more cost effective to buy this fully built retired system, even more effective than buying used parts. For example, this computer features a 4790 and it would cost about 160 to 180 dollars to get a 4790 used. I still don't have a motherboard, I still don't have a chassis, I still don't have a power supply or anything. So I would definitely have to spend more than 249 even just buying used parts to put a computer together. Now, if you look on eBay, you might see a lot of retired workstations starting at like $50, right? Those often have very slow processors that's not very good at all. And uh, they were probably used in an office by somebody just working on spreadsheets and things of that nature. That's not what this system is. These types of workstations were marketed to firms like engineering firms and firms that's doing like serious work that needs some processing power. It's not rare to find these with Quadro uh, ded dedicated uh, graphics in them. This doesn't have it, but a lot of times you do see that. And oftentimes say a Quadro P2000 you might see for three or $400 you might be able to get a computer with a Quadro P2000 in it for three or $400. So that kind of shows you why buying a fully built system like this is a good idea, especially when you're trying to have a super powered Plex server. Um, I, I wouldn't say this is gonna be super powered, but it's definitely gonna be a powerful Plex server. Now, one of the reasons why I needed to upgrade was because Oh yeah, a little bit more about this. I bought a um, SSD to run the OS of this. I was thinking about going with Unraid, but I'm taking a I'm taking a computer science class right now, and I have free access to um, some Windows keys, Windows Server 2012, 16, or whatever the newest one is. I can't remember if it was 18 or 19, but the newest Windows Server, and I think I might give it a shot. Now, I did give a, a thought to maybe um, get a RAID card and run a RAID array in here, but I think I'm actually going to hold off on that. But I do think I'm going to do I'm going to do my four terabyte drive and one more four terabyte and run a RAID one because I think right now all of my stuff is on one terabyte drive. I think it'll be a little while before four terabytes is not enough for me. And by that time, I'll work out better whether I want to get a RAID card to put in here or get a whole nother device and just, you know. So that'll be down the line, guys. So like I said, reason why I needed to upgrade because I'm now running the HD Home Run Quadro. And those, a lot of people may know that Plex does have an area that allows you to watch live TV. So it'll look out on your network, it'll find your Quadro, and then you can play it at your TV. 
Cool thing is it gives you, you know, all like the DVR type functionality. You can pause live TV, rewind live TV. You can set up recordings and then go back to your recordings and watch them later. All that stuff is excellent. But I found out even with one stream of running this and trying to use my TV, I was running into buffering issues. I'm using an old laptop that I can't even really remember the specs on it, but it's not a great one. And it is plugged in through ethernet, but it's just not a very good laptop. And it was having problems with uh, trying to record in real time and produce the video because that's what it needed to do in case I hit pause rewind. It needed to have the video that I'm watching already recorded. And it was really struggling with that. So I have, there's five people in the family, so we could potentially watch five different things. I doubt it because mostly everybody just watch streaming things. But if we did, I want to have a computer that can handle multiple streams and do all the things I want to do. Let's get this thing open, see what's in here. All right, so it looks pretty standard. It doesn't have a hard drive. I've got the solid state and I'm going to be putting in a four terabyte. So it has 16 gigs of RAM. That's another thing. That's pretty big. That's a pretty big deal. You're not going to find that on the $50 Optiplexes on, that you see on eBay. You're not going to find 16 gigs of RAM. So we got 16 gigs of RAM, the 4790. And machines like this, this is a, an HP uh, Z230. And like I was telling you, it is uh, marketed to, you know, like engineering firms and things like that. So the power supply is gonna be a little bit better quality and the motherboard is gonna be a little bit better quality than something like an Optiplex. It does have USB 3.0. It's got a DVD drive, you never know. I guess it's not Blu-ray. So I do have a Blu-ray drive that I might put in here for ripping Blu-rays. But yeah, guys, I mean, this is pretty standard. Like I said, this is gonna be a journey, so there are gonna be more Plex videos. I'm gonna be talking about, especially with the integration with the HD Home Run Quadro. So if you like these videos, go ahead and like and subscribe, come back later, and you'll see more Plex information. Peace.